Today we are going to talk about the 31P NMR spectroscopy. Directly we will go for the uh, examples. So we have three complexes H3, uh, sorry, compounds H3PO4 and H3PO3 and H3PO2. So these three complex we can observe, uh, we can uh, uh, explain by taking a 31P NMR spectroscopy how the structure is looking like. So if 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 we see H3PO4 structure, it looks like this. Pass press is here, one double bond O, OH, OH, and OH. So if we record the 31P NMR for this compound, here we will get a single peak, we will get a singlet because these OH protons will get uh, exchanged by the solvent. So they may not involve in the coupling, so because of that reason we get a single peak here. And if we go for H3PO3, so here we have pass press, double bond O, OH, OH and hydrogen. So here, this pass plus can couples with this hydrogen, and if couples with this hydrogen, we'll get a, a doublet here. And then we'll further go for H3PO2. In this case, we have P double bond O, OH, here H, and here H. So now this pass plus, this pass plus can couple with this hydrogen as well as this hydrogen. So here we'll get a, a triplet. So these three complexes we can explain by taking the 31 PNMR spectroscopy, the structures I'm saying. So for H3PO4 we get a singlet because uh, this OH protons will undergo exchange with the solvent and for H3PO3 we will get a doublet and H3PO2 we will get a, a triplet. And next example we have that is P4 S3. So the structure of P4 S3 looks like this. Here yes, and here also yes, yes, P, 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 there is a double, the direct PB ones here, okay. So, if we see this structure properly, here, Pasporus is attached directly PP bonds, but this Pasporus having a PS bonds. So this is comes under one type, let's imagine this is PA type and these three will comes under another type. So we will call it as a PB type. Okay, so so now, so since there are two different uh, pass for us, so we will get a two line signal, doublet. So this is for uh, PA proton, PA pass for us and this is for PB pass for us. So now for the PA pass for us, can couples with three uh, P, uh, PB type of passporus and for the it splits into a quadrate four line signal and PB couples with only one PA so we'll get a doublet so if we observe the NMR spectra of P4S3 we'll get the one four line signal and one two line signal this is spectra for P4S3 And next we have H2 uh, this one H2 PO3F okay so uh, the structure of this compound looks like this P double bond O OH is here and OH is here and uh, F is here okay so now imagine that we are recording 31P okay so now uh, here uh, we have only one possibility that passphorus can couple with only 
flow and it cannot couple with OH so that's why in 31p we will get a doublet because its pass place is coupled with fluorine and similarly we can record 19f also for this compound for 19f if you record 19f this fluorine couples with this phosphorus so we will get a doublet so now we have another example that is HPF2 so here phosphorus is the central atom F H F. So this is the structure. So now here we need to focus more. So when we recording 31p NMR for this compound, so phosphorus can couple with hydrogen, sorry, fluorine as well as hydrogen. Okay. So which one will undergo coupling first? So for this we need to see the coupling constant. So coupling constant of phosphorus and fluorine is greater than coupling constant of phosphorus and hydrogen and it's greater than phosphorus uh, uh, coupling constant of hydrogen and fluorine so this is very very important we have to remember this otherwise we will make a mistake so coupling constant of phosphorus and fluorine is greater and then phosphorus and hydrogen then hydrogen and phosphorus we can say that phosphorus is a, a higher atomic number two higher atomic numbers comes first then a higher atomic number hydrogen and uh, uh, two lower atomic numbers we can say like that so now in a 31 p nmr spectroscopy first phosphorus couples with fluorine so phosphorus is here it's coupled with two fluorines right so we'll get a triplet after phosphorus coupled with two fluorine we'll get a triplet so now uh, next phosphorus couples with hydrogen also so that with then each line will split into two two lines so if we record uh, 31p NMR spectra for this compound, we will get uh, 3 doublets. Okay, so this is because of coupling of phosphorus and fluorine, and this is because of coupling of phosphorus and hydrogen. Now, so there is another possibility here we can record 19f also for this compound. We can record 19f NMR also. So now, uh, same, we have to follow same order. So now, pa now fluorine couples with phosphorus first. Here we can see. And next, uh, next, uh, next, uh, fluorine couples with hydrogen. Here. So now, first, uh, first fluorine couples with phosphorus. So here we will get a doublet because only one phosphorus is there. Next, uh, fluorine couples with hydrogen. So here hydrogen also only one. So we will get a two doublets we will get here in 19f nmr for hpo hpf2 we will get two doublets whereas in 31p nmr we will get a three doublets like this and here we can also record 1h nmr spectrum now see how 1h nmr spectrum looks like so we have to follow same order so hydrogen is here first so first hydrogen couples with phosphorus so we will get a two light signal and for the hydrogen couples with fluor fluorine so we'll get a three line signal because two fluorines are there so in nmr spectra we'll get a two triplets so this is about the hpf2 compound so here nothing uh, we, we just need to remember this order first phosphorus fluorine coupling will take place and for the uh, next phosphorus and hydrogen and at last hydrogen and phosphorus coupling takes place we just need to remember this one if you if you can remember this one so it's very easy to predict uh, uh, peaks in different nmr spectroscopy and next we'll go for the uh, f2 h po2 so the structure looks like this p double bond o f f o h okay so here uh, in a 31 p nmr pass plus couples with two hydrogens so we'll get a triplet in case of 19 f nmr pass uh, fluorine couples with pass plus we'll get a doublet it's very simple and next example we have this is very important H two P F three H
so this is the structure okay so first we will take uh, uh, 31 pn number so what is the order uh, we have here uh, coupling constant of pf and it's greater than coupling constant of ph and it's greater than coupling co coupling constant of hf we can remember also two pass plus comes first then uh, fluorine hydrogen at last hydrogen and fluorine comes okay so now this is the structure here we have now we are recording a 31p so here uh, 31p we are recording first uh, phosphorus couples with fluorine right here we can see phosphorus couples with fluorine first so number of fluorines are how many here three fluorines are there so first we will get a four lane signal okay now phosphorus also couples with hydrogen next at loss next one is hydrogen coupling with phosphorus and further here two hydrogens are there and further each lane splits into three lanes So we can say four triplets or twelve lines in a thirty-one p NMR spectra. And whereas if we go for nineteen f NMR spectra, okay, first uh, fluorine couples with phosphorus. How many phosphorus is there? Only one phosphorus. So we'll get a doublet. And now further fluorine couples with the hydrogen. How many hydrogens are there? Two hydrogen. So each doublet will split into three lines. So here we will get two doublets, sorry, two triplets or uh, six lines. Next, we will go for 1H NMR now. So now first hydrogen couples with phosphorus and next fluorine. So here we have one phosphorus, we will get doublet. Now hydrogen couples with fluorine at last. We have three fluorines, so each doublet will split into four lines. So in the NMR spectra we get two quadrants, total lines, eight lines we will get. So this is very simple if we can remember this series. Okay. So according to this, if when we are recording 31p NMR spectroscopy, first passpress couples with fluorine and further hydrogen. And when we are recording the um, 19f NMR spectroscopy, we can see here first fluorine is coupling with phosphorus and at last fluorine is uh, at last fluorine is coupling fluorine is coupling with hydrogen and when we are recording 1h proton so he see here hydrogen is coupling with phosphorus and further hydrogen is coupling with fluorine so like that we have to uh, draw the tree diagram we can see here the coupling constant of this one is greater than the coupling constant whatever represented here that is that is the thing here also we can see the coupling constant whatever is here that is greater than the coupling constant of these two peaks and next we have uh, dimethoxy phosphate dimethoxy phosphate so the structure looks like this p o c h 3 p o c h 3 and hydrogen okay so uh, when we record uh, uh, 31 p nmr for this uh, compound so here pass plus couples with this hydrogen so we'll get a doublet okay next further these phosphorus can also couples with these hydrogens okay so total six hydrogens are there three is from here three from here so now each line will split into seven line signal okay so next uh, we have uh, uh, trimethoxy phosphate So in the trimethoxy phosphate we have O CH3 O CH3 
uh, o ch3 so here this phosphorus couples with this nine protons it gives 10 lines we will get 10 lines signal for uh, this uh, trimetoxy phosphate in nmr spectroscopy and we have next to methyl dimethoxy phosphonate so the structure looks like this methyl is here OCH3 this is the structure okay so initially this phosphorus couples with the <coughs> this methyl hydrogens so we will get a, a four line signal here okay next further this phosphorus couples with these six hydrogens now each line is split into seven lines okay so this many lines we will get we can say four septets or we can say 28 lines in 31p nmr spectra next we have trimethyl triphenyl phosphonate So the structure looks like this O double bond O uh, O here benzene group here also benzene group sorry sorry not this one here also benzene group triphenyl phosphonate okay so in this case phosphorus cannot couple with these hydrogens because it's for too far so here no hydrogen is available so because of that reason we will get a singlet in this case so phosphorus cannot couple with these hydrogens cannot couple so because of that reason we will get only singlet for this compound next we have HP2O6 so the structure of HP2O6 looks like this P minus and hydrogen is here So this is a structure in phosphorus NMR spectroscopy if you see the phosphorus NMR spectroscopy here two different phosphorus is present okay so for that we will get a, a doublet because two different phosphorus is present and we can imagine this PA phosphorus this is PB so this is PA and this is PB so for the PA couples with this hydrogen we will get a doublet and pb there is no coupling we will get a singlet only so in the nmr spectroscopy for this compound we will get one doublet and one singlet this is for h2p2o6 next we have uh, h2p2o5 so the structure of this compound looks like this double bond o double bond o o minus and here also o minus and hydrogen is here and hydrogen is here so here both the phosphorus are in equivalent environment right so in this case they are not equivalent because here we have hydrogen here we have o minus but in this case they are equivalent so because of that reason uh, they give only one peak and further they couples with hydrogen we will get a doublet so for this compound we will get a doublet So next important uh, example is uh, 
P P H three five. So this is same as P of five. This I have discussed yesterday in the nineteen of NMR spectroscopy. So the structure looks like this P. Here we have P H. Further P H. Sorry, this is P P H three. P P H three. And P P H three here. So we can take it as an axial, and these are equatorial. So at at more than minus hundred degree temperature, if we record the NMR because of pseudo Berry rotation, we will get a single peak. But when we record at below to a minus hundred degree temperature, so there we can identify the axial as well as equatorial phosphorus. Because of that reason, we will get a doublet. So this is for axial uh, uh, phosphorus, and this is for equatorial phosphorus. And for the uh, this axial phosphorus and equatorial phosphorus will couples with this fluorine, okay? And for the each line will split into two line signal, okay? So this is because of Pa and phosphorus coupling, and this is because of Pe and phosphorus coupling. And now we have uh, uh, now we have uh, Pa. Now Pa couples with equatorial phosphorus as well as Pe couples with axial phosphorus. So there are uh, three equatorial phosphorus. So now each line will split into four lines because it is coupling with three equatorial phosphorus, like this. And now equatorial uh, phosphorus will couple with axial phosphorus. So there are uh, two axial phosphorus. We will get a three lines. So totally in NMR spectroscopy, it's having two quartets. And two triplets. This is at minus uh, less than minus hundred degree temperature. Sorry, less than minus hundred degree temperature. We will see this. If it is more more uh, high temperature, room temperature, there we will get a single peak. So yeah, this compound is very important. We have PF three Cl two. So this exists in two forms. This is one form. This is another form. So this compound exists in two so two structures. This is one form. This is another form. So when we record thirty one p for this compound, okay. Uh, initially, uh, we have a. This is at room temperature. Room temperature, it it takes like this, and at uh, minus one forty degree temperature, it takes like this. Okay, so all possible uh, in this case, all fluorines are same. Okay, fluorine will not couple with chlorine. All fluorines are same, so because of that, phosphorus couples with all fluorines. I mean, all are equivalent because of that reason, it couples with only one pro one fluorine. So we will get a doublet. At room temperature, for this compound, we will get a doublet. At minus one forty degree temperature, this is a little little bit different because here two fluorines are axial and one fluorine is equatorial. Okay, so now we will get a two line signal because uh, this is for Fe and this is for Fe. So now Fe couples with the phosphorus, so uh, it it uh, uh, gives. A doublet and this also gives a doublet. Now Fe couples with equatorial also. So now we will get a this is a doublet. Now Fe couples with Fe. There are two Fe pro, Fe fluorines are there. So those two uh, will give a triplet. So now each doublet will split into a triplet. Okay. At uh, at room temperature, this compound is having only doublet, whereas. At uh, uh, low temperature, that means minus one forty degree temperature, it's having two doublets and two triplets. So the stuck the spectra looks like this: two doublets first, next three trip two triplets. So this is about the uh, NMR's nineteen uh, F NMR spectroscopy.
uh, one last uh, uh, example that P two O seven and P two O six. So if we see the structures for uh, this uh, P two O five, it looks like this. So in this case, both the passwords are in equivalent environment. We will get a singlet. And if we see the P two O six, the structure looks like this. O minus, and here also O minus. Double bond O, O minus, and O minus. So here also it is a uh, both the passwords are in equivalent environment. We will get a singlet. So this is about the nineteen of NMR spectroscopy. I hope uh, everything is clear. Thank you.